We're gonna do something a little different today. I'm not gonna discuss some fancy new gear and I'm not gonna show a ton of sample photos where we pixel peep each image. Instead, we're gonna just talk. We're gonna talk about art. More specifically, about creating art. The art of creating art. I tend to be fairly visible on social media, which opens me up for lots of interactions with aspiring photographers who want to learn the craft. I love that because truly, one of my favorite things in the world is passion. I don't care if you're passionate for mini action figures, Dungeons and Dragons, ancient musical instruments, bodybuilding, whatever. I just love seeing people that have an intense passion for something that constantly takes them down the rabbit hole of learning and exploring and growing as a person. So when people approach me with questions about photography and filmmaking, it gets me truly excited to see someone care so much about something that they're spending their free time that they could be using to do anything else to learn and better themselves. And for the record, that includes you too. You're here right now on YouTube listening to some random dude talk about creating art when you could be doing anything else. It would be so easy for you to simply scroll social media for the next 12 hours until bedtime and repeat for the next 60 years until you die, but instead, you came here to YouTube with the intention of learning more about your craft. And bravo to you for that, and I sincerely mean it. So when people approach me with questions about how to create better art, whether that's photos, video, time lapses, etc., my answer is always fairly simple. You just have to do it. I know that sounds so contrived, but I absolutely mean it. There's an exceptional book on the matter by Brendan Leonard called Make It Till You Make It. I'll link it below so you can grab a copy if you want, but I will tell you that it absolutely changed my life and my approach to trying new things and putting myself out there artistically. Distilled into a nutshell, the book basically says that you are never faking it as an artist. You are making art. You are not faking art. You'll constantly compare yourself to the renowned greats and of course feel like an imposter, but the art you're making is always going to be your art and that is always going to be special and unique to you. There is no such thing as fake it till you make it because if you are publishing art, even if that's just on social media like Facebook and Instagram, then you are an artist. If you wait until you feel like your creations are perfect to start publishing them, you will simply never publish them. And the fact of the matter is that no artist is ever 100% happy with what they create. And in fact, I actually believe that a little bit of self-loathing is one of the main motivators for people to keep creating and improving. And that's okay. It's okay to take a photo you aren't happy with. The important thing is to just keep taking those photos. The reality is that the best and easiest way to improve is to just go outside and take some damn photos. Don't worry about trying to take perfect photos, just go outside and practice. I discovered photography when I was going through kind of a rough patch in life. Uh, it was a bad breakup, a dead end job, empty bank account, the whole shebang. To clear my head after work every day, I would drive up into the mountains and I would just sit on a cliff and watch the sunset. You probably know by now that nature brings me peace and this hour of fresh air did wonders for me mentally and emotionally. And having my camera there to try and take some photos was a great way to try and take my mind off the nonsense and forced me to live in that moment. I'd be forced to pay attention to how the clouds were moving across the hills or where the light was coming from. And the camera forced me to study the landscape and really focus on you know, leading lines, where the trees were on the hillside in relation to the elk. I have to admit that very few of my photos from those first few years were actually any good, but that's completely fine. I was spending time outside, I was practicing my art, and I was having fun doing it. Maybe one out of a thousand photos was good, and eventually five out of a thousand, then 10 out of a thousand, then maybe five out of a hundred. The percentage isn't super impressive or important. The important thing is that I was improving by simply doing. I was making it until I made it. This next point is probably the most important point I can possibly make on this subject. And if you've ever joined me for a workshop or listened to me on a podcast, you've probably already heard me talk about this. But lots of photographers will come home with their 999 bad photos out of a thousand, and they will dissect every single thing they did wrong and they'll focus on all these mistakes and errors and they'll just absolutely beat themselves up over it. And over time, they end up not liking photography anymore. They end up hating themselves and their art. Don't do that. Instead, focus on the one good photo and tell yourself what you did right. Why do you like it? What did you just nail in that process and why are you proud of it? You can spend your time as an artist running away from failure or working towards success. I personally choose to look at what I like and try to move in that direction. It can be my own photos or photos from other photographers that I really admire, but for me, the most important part is to know what you want to make rather than what you want to avoid. 
Then the next time you go out to shoot, you keep a little mental checklist of what you like, and you think about that as you're framing your shots. Did you like having an out of focus foreground element? Play with that, try to n incorporate that in your shot in new ways. Find a flower, some grass, leaves on the ground, a tree branch. Get creative around the thing that made you happy. Did you like having the horizon right in the center rather than on a thirds line like the you know common rule of thumb tells you to do? Great, break those rules. Try new compositions with that in them. Find the thing that you love and play with it. It is also okay to have a mental checklist of things to avoid, you know, like underexposure or road signs and people in the background that are distracting because that does help us avoid repeating past mistakes. But in general, I like to focus on the positive. Think about what makes you love the art that you love and work in that direction. You know, as I said before, all artists do have a little bit of self-loathing, but in my opinion, good art comes from a place of self-loving. So grab your camera, get out there, and start making. Thanks for listening today, everyone. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comment section below. And if you're extra inspired to take the next steps in your photography journey, you can join me in person in the field for a bucket list photography adventure. I'll put the link in the description below so you can check them out. As always, I'm Nate in the Wild, and until next time, stay nerdy.